Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this tutorial, I want to share with you guys a setup that I use for creating halftone graphics in Photoshop. Yes, there are already two halftone filters in the program, but I really do prefer this setup, which creates a live halftone effect with much more flexibility. It's five simple layers that you can drop on any document for kind of an instant, fully adjustable halftone. We'll also take a look at how to customize it a bit to introduce some additional color or transparency. I really like this setup. I hope you guys will enjoy this one. Let's get started. All right, I'm going to start with a nice simple image here just to get things set up. This image is about 2,500 pixels wide or so, but this setup is really flexible in terms of image size. The first layer I'm going to create is a very easy one. Layer number one is a hue saturation adjustment layer with the saturation turned all the way down. I'll call that layer desaturate, and I'm actually going to right click and delete the layer mask just to keep this whole setup nice and clean. Moving on to layer number two, this is going to be a pattern layer, and I'll get that set up by opening this image that I will include a link to. So this is a seamless image, meaning you can tile it and it just repeats over and over and over again. It's actually not a super large image. It's 1920 pixels square. But if I use edit define pattern and save that into my presets, I'll call it grunge overlay. Then back in the other document, I will create a pattern layer, assign it that new grunge overlay pattern, and I'm going to delete the mask on this one too. Nice and simple. It's just an endlessly repeating pattern. It's a big enough sample that you have to look closely to notice it repeats itself, especially when what I'm going to do here is set this to overlay mode. And then I just have this general grunge and I can drop this pattern on any document. It'll tile to fill in any size image. I'm actually working on a new section of the Texture Lab site for seamless patterns just to do this kind of thing. This layer you'll see in a moment is going to give a little bit of natural distress to the halftone. For the moment here, I'm going to turn this layer off. I want to show you guys how this next layer works without any kind of interference. Layer number three is also going to be a pattern, and this one will serve a different purpose. I'm going to use this very, very tiny image, just 50 by 50 pixels. I'm going to define this one as a pattern, and I'll call it halftone dots. Then back in the test document, I'm going to create another pattern layer use the halftone dots pattern. I'll call it halftone dots. Also delete the mask on this layer. And if I zoom way in here, it's basically a grid of these little radial gradients. If you've watched some of the other videos I've made, you probably won't be surprised that I'm going to set this layer to the hard mix blending mode. And that basically combines all the subtle values of this layer and the layers underneath, and then just spits out a value of black or white, kind of like a threshold. If you're interested, I'll link to a video that goes into a little bit more detail on this concept. One quick thing here, I'm going to clean up some of these harsh edges by bringing the fill value of this layer down just a touch to maybe 90%. Hard mix is one of the special eight blending modes, meaning fill and opacity do two different things. In this case, bringing down the fill just rounds off that harsh transition between black and white. And it's pretty awesome how that works out to create a halftone dot pattern. Because this is a pattern layer, you can double click on the layer icon and you can change the scale of the dots. You can also rotate it, and it does look pretty cool. It gives you a nice asymmetry. That being said, I've found Photoshop has a really hard time processing a rotated pattern. It really, really slows things down. So if you want to rotate this, it might be better to do that when you're done working on things. So I will leave that at zero for now. I do want to point out something optional here. A true halftone wouldn't have any of these details that kind of break out of the shapes of the dots. So if you're really going for authenticity, it's just a matter of applying a little bit of a blur to the original image. So maybe I'll make this a smart object to keep it live. And if I give that a Gaussian blur set to just two pixels, it's enough to turn the whole thing into just cleaner halftone dots. All right, let's turn back on layer number two, the grunge overlay. And you can see that's kind of a subtle detail, but it does a nice job of introducing just a little bit of chaos into the halftone. So it's no longer absolutely perfect circles, it just gives it a little bit more of a vintage look. Next up, layer number four is gonna be my go-to adjustment layer for bringing in some color, the gradient map adjustment layer. I'll also delete that layer mask. And if I click on the gradient in the properties tab, this is just a very easy way to remap those black and white values. And I've got a little folder full of presets that I'll post for you guys. They're divided into three groups and kind of specifically designed to be used together. We're gonna to check that out in a little bit more detail in just a minute. For now, I'll leave this to that kind of neutral newsprint color. And finally, layer number five is gonna be another pattern. This will be an easy one. I'll also link to this image. I'm gonna define this as a pattern and call it paper screen. 
Then I'm going to create a new pattern layer here. I will select the pattern we just created, rename that one, and also delete the layer mask. So this one is also a seamless pattern that'll tile to fill in the document. I'm gonna set this layer to screen mode and that just gives it a little bit of a weathered paper distress. All right, well, those are the five layers for this setup. What's really cool about this is I can take all five of those layers and drag them into a group folder. I'll call the folder halftone and this group becomes kind of like a halftone adjustment layer. These seamless patterns will fit over any size document and you can actually drag the whole folder right out of this document and drop it not over just an image, but a full design with a bunch of different layers. So I've got a document here with a couple of layers and most of this stuff was done in Illustrator and I just copied it over, put a few elements in using Photoshop and I did flatten a few things to kind of simplify it for this video. But part of why I like this setup is that this image just looks so much different with and without that halftone effect. And rather than creating this and kind of guessing what it would look like as a halftone, when I was building this, I just kept this folder on top so I can see how it's coming together with and without that treatment. I can always change the scale of the dots along the way. And to me, that just makes it a lot easier to get a sense of how things are coming together as I'm working. All right, let's get some more colors in here. And this is actually where I can start to use some masks, specifically on this gradient map layer. So maybe we want a custom color for Bigfoot. What I'll do is control click or command click on the Bigfoot layer icon to make a selection in the shape of that layer. Then I've got the gradient map layer selected. If I hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the Create Layer Mask button, that'll create a mask that's kind of the opposite of the active selection. I'm gonna make that same selection again, then create a new gradient map adjustment layer. Since I had an active selection, it automatically gave me a mask in the shape of that selection. Then in the gradient presets here, I've got three folders with different types of gradients. The single color gradients are gonna keep the background paper that off white color, but change the halftone dots to be red or green or whatever it might be here. The overprint gradients are gonna keep the halftone dots black or kind of this off black color, but they're gonna change the color of the white paper, almost like another coat of ink on the page. Then the color themes gradients are gonna change both the halftone ink and the color of the white paper. Let's make Bigfoot black and pink. And if I wanna keep adding colors, it just becomes a little bit of a masking game. So I'm gonna select the shape of this large type on top by command or control clicking on that layer icon. Then I'm gonna to add to that selection by holding the shift key, shift command or control click on another layer icon. Then I need to subtract the shape of Bigfoot himself. So rather than shift, I'll hold alt or option, command or control click to subtract a shape from a selection. That sounds so confusing when I try to call out the shortcuts for Mac and Windows, but it's actually kind of easy to get a feel for. All right, so with that selection, I'm gonna hit delete or backspace to fill that part of the mask with black. And luckily I still have an active selection. I'll create one more gradient map adjustment layer and use another one of these presets to give those areas a different color. Then there's one more thing I like to do here with the color. I'm gonna shift select all three of these gradient maps and use Command and Control T to transform and just rotate and offset them just a little bit to create kind of that analog misregistered look. So I've got the colors in place here, but I can still go in and adjust the scale of the halftone dots, maybe even rotate this pattern just a little bit and that helps to clean up any unwanted patterns that the repeating dots might create. All right, there's one more piece of the puzzle to look at, which is how this halftone setup works with transparency. Before that, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do me a quick favor and hit the like button and thank you for that. All right, well, let's say I have an image that I want a halftone effect for, so I'll drag this folder into the document. But what I want here is to apply the halftone to Bigfoot with no background white color. I just want this t-shirt to show through as the background. What I'll do here is take these five layers and drag them out of the group folder then holding the Alt key or the Option key, I'll click in between these layers and the layer I want the effect to be applied to, and that creates a clipping mask, meaning all these layers are kind of sandwiched onto the base layer. I need all of them except the gradient map adjustment layer. In this case, I'm just gonna delete that layer, and I'll delete the empty folder too. Then I'm gonna double click on the base layer to bring up the blending options. I'm holding the Option key on a Mac or Alt key in Windows and dragging the white value down in the Blend If section for this layer to make the white values transparent. Holding Alt or Option creates that nice smooth transition from opaque to transparent. However, that smooth transition does leave some traces of white in here. 
So to get a really nice clean fill with color, I'll take these five layers, everything in the clipping mask, drag them into a group folder, and here on this folder, I'm gonna use the color overlay effect, and that'll fill it with solid black, or you can basically fill it with any color here. And if I want it to sit a little bit more naturally on the fabric, I can use the blending options on this group folder, holding the Alt or Option key, drag the white value slider down for the underlying layer to pick up some of the highlights of that T-shirt. All right, well, that is the whole thing. I will link to these pattern images and gradient presets below. I wanna give a very special thank you to the people who have supported the Texture Labs project on Patreon. It really is your support that has kept all this stuff completely free, and I thank you. Always more of this stuff on the way, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.